strongly believe that all mothers have a right to quality health care and a dignified, compassionate birthing experience. They deserve to feel safe and cared for, just like I did, despite unfortunately having to have C-sections during the birth of my children. But for far too many women, as we know, especially Black women and women of color, the birthing experience can be just the opposite. It can be riddled with anxiety, frustration, or worse, it can end in tragedy. Today, Black mothers in California are six times more likely to die within a year of pregnancy than white women. Black mothers in California also have a higher rate of death than Black women nationally. What's more, Black moms and mother, other moms of color consistently report receiving a lower standard of care than white mothers, from unfair treatment to harsh language, rough handling, and yes, for C-sections. This is nothing short of unacceptable, as is the fact that Black infants in California continue to die at a rate more than double our state infant mortality rate. These are preventable deaths, but these deaths and racial gaps in mortality rates didn't happen in a vacuum. They are the legacy, as we all know, of systemic racism and inequality. And we as a state have a moral imperative to root out these problems from the ground up. Through evidence-based prevention and interventions, I have no doubt that the Momnibus Act will help save lives. And in doing so, we will make leaps and bounds towards creating a healthier, more equitable, and just California for all, especially for women and families. So in closing, I wanna extend my deepest gratitude to all of you um, whose passion and advocacy and dedication has led to this victory including Senator Skinner and her colleagues in the legislature, as well as courageous advocates like Norbise Flint, our next speaker. So thank you so much. Thank you to California First Partner. Um, turn down my audio a little bit to make sure I'm not echoing. Um, again, my name is Norbese Flint, the Executive Director of Black Women for Wellness Action Project, a statewide reproductive justice organization. One of our first programs was called Shinganzi, aimed to address, to address the egregious rates of Black women and babies dying before their first birth, birth days. Fast forward over 20 years later, a new report released last month from CDPH shows that in some ways we have even greater disparities now than we did 20 years ago. Far too often our office holds the stories of Black women who never got to plan a first birthday party because they weren't listened to, our funerals with teeny coffins and teeny outfits to bury teeny babies, stories that in many cases were preventable with the right resources and dedications, stories that have burned into our memory. And although Black women are magical, our magic is not enough and shouldn't be solved and shouldn't be asked to solve this crisis. And that's why we are here today. Today, we get to celebrate not who and where we are, but what and where we want and could be. We get to celebrate redefining what is possible for birthing people, how we can reach for the ceiling and not the floor when it comes to joyous, healthy births, how today our most vulnerable pregnant folks in the state have new hope and resources to help close the gap between life and death, how California said to many Black and Indigenous pregnant folks across the state, that your lives matter, your births matter, your families matter, not only in death, but in life as well. In reproductive justice, we center our work on three principles, the freedom to have a child, to not have a child, and be able to raise your family with dignity and respect. At the core of this bill signing here today, it tackles for hundreds of thousands of people, both the freedom to have a child and an ability to raise your family. As I sit here with my very sweet and very early rising Allende, um, was today seven weeks, seven weeks, um, and I think it was 5 a.m. today, and think how I'm excited about him taking, taking him to the zoo and JPL in the near future and worried about all the problems we need to solve globally for his generation has a future. It brings me joy that because of the work of Governor Newsom and team, the legislators, Senator Skinner, advocates, including all the sponsors, which I would be remiss not to call out, Western Center on Law and Poverty, the California Nurses Midwives Association, March of Dimes, May Rao Pro-Choice California, Patrice Solis Institute, and National Health Law Program, and the many other supporters have and will for so many families share that joy. And how much more we need you because there's still work to do. So let's celebrate tomorrow and celebrate today, excuse me, and tomorrow I'll pull up our sleeves and get to work. 
And with that, I'll throw it to my Shariki and hopefully you don't hear my baby screaming in the back. <laughs> well done. Thank you, Gracie. And thank you, Governor Newsom, for inviting me today. It's an honor to be here along with first partner, Jennifer Sibyl Newsom, Senator Skinner, co-authors, the coalition of co-sponsors, that Nabrisi mentioned, and all the advocates across the state who've advocated tirelessly for SB 65 and the California Momnibus Bill. I'm the March of Dimes Director of Maternal and Health Initiatives in Southern California. The March of Dimes is one of the oldest and largest national organizations fighting for the health of all moms and babies. And we know we're in the midst of a maternal infant health crisis. And as we've talked about, we're seeing these growing disparities, persistent outcomes with Black women and babies disproportionately impacted by preterm birth, maternal mortality, and infant death. And unfortunately, we know these disparities and racial gaps in health outcomes exist regardless of education, insurance status, and income for Black women. Mm -hmm. And we're grateful for your attention to this issue and to reimagine maternity care, pregnancy, and birth for all Californians. Because when we improve health care and social outcomes, social conditions for all vulnerable families, we will improve health outcomes for all. This bill will improve data collection to develop programs and systems changes to prevent mater preventable maternal and infant death. It will address the social drivers of health, such as stress and poverty, by improving access to doula care, as well as a guaranteed basic income that prioritizes pregnant people in California. This bill will also to diversify and expand access to midwifery care for all people in California. And as a woman, when I was pregnant in grad school, I was on Medi-Cal and I had a doula and I had midwifery care. And I know how beneficial this was to me, how the support helped. And I wanna make sure that all folks have this, regardless of income, and regardless of race. And so today, as we celebrate, today, as we join hands and know that we are putting together a better future for moms and babies, we know that there's still more work to do. California has shown its commitment to maternal and infant health and to improve maternal and infant health. And the California Momnibus Bill and SB 65 aligns with the federal Momnibus Bill, and we hope that California today is an example for nations for states across the nation to take up similar legislation because literally lives depend on it. So thank you for your support. Thank you, Governor Newsom, for signing this bill. And Marcia Dimes and I look forward to working with you in the future for more legislation and policies that improve the health of moms, babies, and families in California. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Akila Weber. I am the assembly member representing the 79th Assembly District. And I'm honored to be here as a proud co-author of SB 65, because this bill is not only significant to me professionally as an obstetrician gynecologist, mm -hmm. but also personally as a black woman who is giving birth two times. I am aware that the successful outcomes of my pregnancies are unfortunately not necessarily the norm for women that look like me. Death rates for Black pregnant and postpartum Californians continue to be higher than the state's average, and Black and Native American babies die at a rate more than double the state's average. So this bill affirms that here in California, these kind of disparities in our maternal and infant outcomes will no longer be tolerated. Through the established establishment of standardized research data collection, improving the training of our current and future healthcare providers, empowering all women with the tools to allow them to better advocate for their health, and acknowledging the role that physicians, midwives, and doulas play in creating self safe and healthy outcomes, we are saying loud and clear that the status quo cannot and will not continue. Thank you, Governor Newsom, for your signature. Thank you, Senator Skinner, and my colleagues, and this entire coalition who are leading the Momnibus Movement. I'm looking forward to our continued momentum on improving maternal and infant health here in California. 
and across the nation. And I'd now like to invite Senator Eggman to share her remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Weber. And it is my honor to also be here with all of you today for the signing of California's Momnibus Bill. Uh, this Today's signature is just a bookend on the work that we have done all year long, really focusing on maternal mental health because we know healthy moms make healthy babies and they make healthy families and a, a healthy community. Um, this includes, and as a licensed clinical social worker, really important, full uh, coverage for mom's uh, mental health uh, and physical through Medi-Cal extended for the first year after the birth of their child. This also includes easier verification for people to be able to sign up for CalWORKs and the expansion of the pregnancy grants for women in their first trimesters. Uh, it also includes, for the first time, uh, Medi-Cal doula care, uh, which now thanks, and we're going to have a, a focus work group that really figures out how do we get the care to those who most need it, as we can tell by uh, the research that Dr. Weber referenced before. How do we actually put the policy into place? Um, so it's truly an honor to be here today for the uh, 2001 Momnibus. Uh, with the governor and the first partner and all the advocates, we thank you. We couldn't have done it without you. And we certainly couldn't have done it without our staff that are behind the scenes as the chair of uh, the Budget on Health and Human Service. I can tell you, Dr. Renita Polk and Scott August did just yeoman's work behind the scenes to get this done. Um, and our leader in this budget process this year on the Senate side uh, is the author of this bill, uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Senator Nancy Skinner. And I'm going to turn it over to her next. Thank you so much, um, Senator Eggman. And hey, your leadership was phenomenal. Being the sub-chair of the budget committee that managed to incorporate all the wonderful things in our Momnibus bill. Initially, the SB 65, the Momnibus, Momnibus bill, had these other wonderful components that really, would, I mean, they're nothing except on paper unless they are budgeted for. And so those things were included in the budget and Governor Newsom, of course, thank you for your leadership because ultimately the budget is, while it's all of our product, you sign it, you support it, and you were completely supportive of those um, items that Senator Eggman mentioned. Let me give, let me recognize some of the other legislators that have joined us who aren't gonna be speaking, but who played key roles in this bill. And before I recognize them, let me also say that it was a privilege and an honor for me to be able to carry this bill. And I wanna thank all the partners because I really was just the, the shepherd for it. Um, and the real work was done by our incredible Black Women for Wellness as we heard from Norbezi and her beautiful um, baby, seven week old, and of course from March of Dimes, from Mashariki Kudumu, and uh, uh, the Western Center on Law and Poverty, a huge coalition that backed Momnibus and has been working on this issue for years. But let me mention my good co authors. We have Assembly Member Cecilia Aguiar Curry, Assembly Member Ann Dr. Joaquin Arambula, Assembly Member Isaac Bryan, Assembly Member Autumn Burke, who has carried much legislation in this space and has really uh, broken a lot of path, uh, groundbreaking issues that led to Momnibus. Um, Senator Susan Rubio, Senator Lena Gonzalez, Senator Sidney Kamlager, and as Governor um, Newsom had mentioned earlier before we went live, one of our new Senator fathers, Senator Henry Stern. <laughs> I wonder how that's going, Henry. Anyway, um, I also wanna thank our first partner, Jennifer Seibold Newsom, for her leadership in this space, for women, for families, for birthing people, and your initiatives such as California All Women, California All Kids, and so much more. As was already referenced, Momnibus confronts the glaring fact that there are higher death rates for Black birthing people, six times higher, and for their babies, double what it is for their white counterparts, and poorer health outcomes. And this is also true for birthing parents and babies of color, particularly Native Americans. Momnibus requires that we fix this and we end what is a glaring racial disparity. And let's be specific, it is a racial disparity. While we want to improve health outcomes, pregnancy outcomes, uh, it, it, eliminate all infant and maternal mortality, we need to accept that there is a glaring racial disparity and Momnibus addresses that. 
But momnibus alone is not enough. We need more support for birthing parents, babies, families, mothers, it's essential. But the good news is that under Governor Newsom's leadership, California is making great strides in expanding the support for birthing people, for mothers, for families, for children. Um, as you heard from Senator Eggman, the incredible things that were in the state budget that Governor Newsom signed. But in addition to those things, the doula care, the expanded Medi-Cal and such, let me mention a few other things. The state budget included the largest expansion ever of early care and education for our zero to four children. Because all of us, we need to go back to work most of the time. We don't have the privilege to stay home. And unless we have that early care and education, we can't. And so there's, and then it is the reason why so many women left the workplace during the pandemic. But we just approved and Governor Newsom signed a state budget that has the largest expansion of early care and education for our zero to four children, including TK. Um, a guaranteed pilot program, guaranteed income pilot program, specifically for low income pregnant mothers, expanded state tax credits for children, for low income families. And these are all put dollars directly into the pockets of these families that need this so much. And we are the first state ever to adopt universal school meals for all of our students, TK all the way to 12th grade. And what a huge relief that is for families. You do not have to worry about your child being hungry or packing that lunch or you name it. So all of that is so expensive, it is so, so important. Ah, we have another member who just joined us, Assembly Member Wendy Carrillo, another co-author. So let me also give her the shout out. So back to Momnibus. Momnibus was initiated and supported by a huge statewide and national coalition who are also backing a companion federal bill, which we need. And so we will continue to work on that. And so I thank all of those sponsors and the co my co-authors and all of the partnership we've had. But let me now turn it over to Governor Gavin Newsom, as I mentioned, who's been a huge champion for women and families, birthing people, and who today will sign Momnibus. <laughs> thank you, Senator. And, and let me, uh, well, I'll brag on you in a moment. Let me just thank all of you for taking the time to be here. Let me uh, start out appropriate by thanking my wife for uh, leading this off. And as she said, she's, this, is, this has been an, an area of, of commitment uh, for her that transcends our time up here in Sacramento. So appropriate. Uh, that she is here to kick this off. And to uh, Senator Eggman, thank you. To Dr. Weber, thank you for your comments. Two remarkable advocates that remind us that we have work to do here in the state of California. We long prided ourselves on being on the leading and cutting edge. We talk about California, future happens here first, but the reality is we've struggled in this space. Uh, we haven't delivered. These gaps have been persistent. Uh, and as was noted uh, for decades that we've highlighted the issues of these disparities as it relates to maternal and infant uh, uh, health and mortality. Uh, the issues have gotten only worse. The issues have become more pronounced in terms of our focus, but the outcomes have gotten worse. And that's something we have to reconcile. And I think the spirit that brings me uh, to this call is that commitment for all of us to reconcile that and to close that gap and actually deliver on results. We know the what, we know the why, this is the how. SB 65 is the how to really hold ourselves to a higher level of accountability. We've been nibbling at the edges. We've been focused on this issue three years that I've had the privilege of being governor. We've talked about in every budget our incremental steps to move forward to close these gaps. But this year, I feel like we've done something that will break through. I mean, the guaranteed income uh, for pregnant women, that's a big deal. No one else in the country is doing that. The, the doula services, the expansion, and by the way, that expansion includes uh, women regardless of their immigration status. We're proud of that. No other state's doing that. The expansion of services and supports through CalWORK for pregnancy support, that's a big deal. Most other states are pulling back, not leaning forward. And of course, addressing paperwork, I know that was referenced, uh, but that's actually a big deal. Uh, some of the issues of just simple and easier access to CalWORKs that often is overlooked, some of the bureaucratic hurdles in the past. And of course, uh, as Senator Eggman said, I, I, I think it's just so important to talk about uh, just the issue of postpartum and 
maternal mental health. Um, we don't talk about that enough. I, I love that we were able to expand that medical eligibility, the full scope services, not just for doula services, but uh, for postpartum services. Again, I, I don't want to overstate this, but I'm, I'm really proud. I don't know many states doing one of those four things, let alone all four or five of the things that we were able to accomplish together in this budget. But again, the application of these ideals is in that how that we are trying to address here. More data, more transparency, more accountability, codifying and establishing more formally these work groups that we've had nibbling around the edges, bringing in more experts, bringing more expertise to bear. And again, more accountability through that uh, body to the work we do through the legislative process and through our work through the executive branch. And so forgive me the long windedness uh, but as Jen said, is a parent of four uh, and dealing just with the realities of Jen's four C-sections, I mean, surgeries. I was, by the way, there for the first one and the other ones, but the first one, which I will never remember, ever forget. Um, pregnancy is hard. Henry, you know this. Pregnancy is hard. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, uh, all the issues going on with women and girls all across this country that have been highlighted uh, I'm just glad we're here doing more justice uh, to women and girls and in, in advancing the cause of social and racial justice uh, that are really the backbones of these efforts. And again, not just the African-American community, and I appreciate the reference to a Native American community where the disparities, particularly infant disparities, uh, are even more pronounced. So thank you all for, you know, we, we talked about a parent's agenda a few years ago when we got here. This is part of the parent's agenda. I love mom the bus, everything about that, Senator Skinner, thank you. And just in closing, let me just uh, put that punctuation uh, on your work. It's been such a, a treat. You know, Jen says this all the time, working with you um, and your unique status as budget chair, your commitment to these issues, uh, your demonstrable uh, uh, advocacy uh, that you laid out, not just in the work we did on child care, the work we did with the child tax credit, the work we did with TK for all, but the incredible work you did to take the whole nother level, uh, our meals efforts in this state. Uh, those are first across the board. And so we are really proud of you, your leadership, proud of all of you and the collective leadership that's uh, represented here today. Thank you all the co-sponsors and again, to the extraordinary advocates that hold our feet to the fire that are the moral authority that's brought in uh, to this moment. And so with that, let us take no more moments of your time and let's just sign this bill uh, and let's make all of these efforts law here in the state of California. Congratulations, everybody. We appreciate all of you, your incredible leadership. And as everyone knows, it takes a village. And here's our village. Yeah. Okay. Well Amen. done, everybody. Amen. Congratulations. And all the male advocates out there, we got to be held higher level accountability as well. So good job, dads and, and brothers and sisters and caregivers. Well done. Well done. Take care.